In 1989, Rico and Olympus teamed up to create something that they believed would be revolutionary. What they created was a camera that looked like a video camera, weighed a ton, had four stops of exposure compensation, and macro focusing. This was, of course, the Olympus AZ-4, or Rico Mirai, which means future in Japanese. I think it's fair to say that the future that Rico was seeing was absolutely insane. A complete SLR system in one neat package. The remarkable Rico Mirai. For the first time in the world, a complete SLR package in a camera, not a case. Bridge cameras are pretty weird as a concept anyway. A weird go between, between point and shoot and SLR cameras. The camera that no one asked for. So of course, I had to take this for a spin. I had to find out why Olympus and Rico believed that this camera was the camera of the future. So we made our way up the M6, dodging shit northern towns and more morally questionable second homeowners, and we found ourselves in the Lake District. Of course, this had to be a good spot to take the Mirai. I don't know if that's how you say it, but I don't know how else I would say it. I wanted to try out the 35 to 135 mil zoom. I wanted to see if the macro was any good. I wanted to see if the Mirai was the future or just bullshit. First of all, we headed to the Langdale Valley. We wanted to head up a small hill and find a nice pool of water at the top and paddle our little feet. It wasn't very long until I discovered that the Mirai's AF system is mediocre to say the least. If your subject isn't in the center of the frame, then you'll have to put them in the center of your frame and half press the shutter button. Then you can move and then you can take the picture. It's a really annoying thing and I didn't like it. I've got to say, I like quite a lot of these shots, but I think I would have quite liked them on most cameras. And ultimately, using this camera is really annoying and hard. It's really big, it's pretty heavy, it looks insane, and it takes like two days to get autofocus. Part of the reason why I think the Mirai is so insane is that it was kind of made in that period where companies would be like, let's put everything on this camera. Because if we put everything on this camera, then surely it'll be the best camera it could possibly be. But let's face it, a jack of all trades is a master of none. And the Mirai is the master of being big and shit. So after dipping our feet in a Baltic Lake District tarn, we moved on to another spot where I would spend way too long trying to get this camera to focus.
this place was pretty unreal, to be honest. I only found it by chance, but I'm really glad that I did. I just wish that the Mirai's focal length went a little bit wider because it didn't really quite get the shot in that I wanted and I couldn't go any further back in the cavern. I know I've spent quite a while ripping the Mirai, but I do kind of like that it was made. Like surely they knew that they didn't need to make this camera. Like it has the weird handle that comes down, the flash that flips up, the macro and crazy focal lengths and everything. I mean, none of it really makes sense, but it's kind of fun, isn't it? Like. And if you see one, it's like, that is mad. Like, why have you got that? So, I don't know. I kind of like it, but would I ever use it again? Probably not, no. Would I ever suggest anyone use it? Maybe, for a laugh, yeah. It's, it would be fun. Looking back at some of the pictures, they're clear enough. And they should be, because it's effectively like an SLR lens. The metering isn't too bad and you can change it from being backlight controlled to center weighted control, but it's not going to be perfect. I think as a concept, having all of these things that this camera can do, all of these different settings, is not a bad idea. Like, of course you might want to be able to have four stops of exposure compensation. You might want to be able to have a 35 to 135 mil lens and all of these kinds of things but it was probably in a way ahead of its time because they didn't make a great camera if all of this stuff was on a small point and shoot and using some better metering system and maybe a slightly better autofocus system then you would be saying that this is a pretty good camera but that isn't the case <laughs> Anyway, after Cathedral Cavern, we went on down to Lake Windermere and wanted to go paddleboarding. We actually have our own paddleboards and we totally went and paddleboarded. It was really cool and I didn't video any of it because I don't trust myself to even kneel on a paddleboard, never mind stand up on one. But I did get some shots at Lake Windermere just before we left. These are some nice, classic sunset shots. You've got to love that shit. I was surprised as I got a picture of what I could only assume is a Cadillac. I don't know. I'm not American. I don't like cars, really. But it was pretty low light by this point. And I think the Rico did a pretty good job. I only had Fuji Superior 400 Extra in and I would say not too bad. All in all, of course, this is a really fun camera. It's fun because it's mental and sometimes you've got to take a step back from wanting to shoot some really expensive camera that inevitably will let you down because you're just not that good of a photographer and just go and pick up a camera that isn't very good and have fun with it because why not i really enjoyed putting this one together and i've got some more really good film camera reviews and all kinds of different stuff for you so i'd appreciate it if you wanted to drop me a subscribe and all that sort of stuff because i've got loads of really good videos to watch and loads of really good videos coming up shortly i really hope that you have a really good week and that even if the weather is starting to turn that you've got some nice things to look forward to and trust me everything's probably gonna be okay maybe <laughs>